This video was sponsored by Birch. More on them later on in the video. A couple weeks ago, I hit 200,000 subscribers on YouTube. Now, this happened around the same time that I started to come down with some pretty serious creator burnout, so I figured, why not two birds, one stone this situation and celebrate this new milestone by outsourcing my essay writing to an AI. More videos for you, less work for me. It's a win-win. <laughs> it's worth a shot, right? So let me go feed the robot that I have chained in my basement all of my old video scripts and I'll be right back. Now that I have built an AI to write all of my videos for me, I can take some time off and give my brain the rest it deserves. And where better to lay down my head than my new Birch mattress? As many of you may know, my partner and I recently moved house, and when we were looking for a real, like, grown-up mattress, we absolutely fell in love with Birch. Birch is a premium mattress in a box company that makes mattresses and sleep products that are stylish, comfortable, and environmentally conscious. Their non-toxic mattresses are made right here in America and are crafted with organic and natural materials that have been sustainably sourced. Now, I actually have really sensitive skin, like I can only use certain clothes detergents or else I get weird like rashes all over my face and neck, but Birch mattresses are Green Guard Gold certified, which means that no harsh chemicals are used in the manufacturing. So I can sleep comfortably knowing their materials are natural and hypoallergenic, along with being just super comfortable. Birch is also committed to being better for the planet by ensuring that their materials are produced and harvest sustainably. They work with ethical partners and adhere to strict social, environmental, and economic standards. And Birch has all of these certifications that basically boil down to, yes, they are definitely ethically produced using sustainably sourced fair trade materials, can confirm. <laughs> So I got the Birch Lux mattress, which is a premium version of their original Birch natural mattress. And I've had it for about a month. And so far I absolutely love it. Between being environmentally friendly and safe for my very sensitive skin, this mattress has been a great investment. It's something that I can feel good about getting and that I know is gonna last. Also, the mattress was delivered right before my mom came down to our house to visit, so she was actually the first person to sleep on it, and my mom is notoriously picky about mattresses. Like, she tried like five or six different mattresses before finally settling on the one that she uses at her house, and she absolutely loved this one. So between me and my dog and my mom, I mean, Birch is like three for three for my family. <laughs> But if you are as picky about your mattresses as my mom is, then don't worry, because with your Birch mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial and a 25 year warranty. So you get more than three months to make sure that you love it. And if you don't, they will pick it up for you and you will get a full refund. The best part about all of this is that Birch delivers your mattress right to your door and for free if you're within the US. It comes rolled up in a box and is super easy to set up yourself as long as you don't have a 75 pound German Shepherd who is constantly making herself the center of attention, she made it not so easy, but that's me. That's on me. I don't know that I can move you and Mattress at the same time. <laughs> Brett, they're gonna think that we paid you to do this. No! Stop it! <laughs> Each Birch Mattress also comes with two of their Eco Rest pillows made from recycled plastic bottles and I can confirm these pillows are so soft, like genuinely some of the best pillows I have ever used in my entire life. I love my Birch Luxe mattress. So if you're looking for a new bed, then check out Birch using the link below or go to birchliving.com slash Zoe B. And if you use my link, you can get $400 off your mattress and two free pillows. And thanks again to Birch for sponsoring this video and giving my mom a restful weekend while she was visiting. <laughs> All right, the AI can take it from here. I'm gonna go lie down. <laughs> Say about what I believe to be the most important question of our time. What is reality? This is a video that covers everything from aliens to race relations to capitalism to basilisks. Okay, so before we can jump into things, we first need to have some context. I'm Jose's lab. I'm a professional lab coat wearer and a huge fan of the character from the Marvel superhero movies. 
This is a video essay, not a one-act poem. This isn't about just any content, it's about everything. And, dear listener, I'm not going to be arguing that we should avoid comedy videos or general video essays or all that fancy. What I am going to be going through today is something like a full-blown video essay, where we're basically all just going to be talking about one thing, and then it's going to be cut down to just me, and then everything I talk about will be just... essay. But that's not actually allowed, because I have a very particular style, and because I like to think of myself as an expert on certain topics, and I want to give an average person a piece of that video essay. You see, I'm going to be talking about puns. I wanted to make a video about puns specifically, because in this video I'm going to be talking about puns, specifically the concept of puns. So, puns are basically a form of punning. They're also a very bad joke. If you're tweeting at someone and they're trying to apologize for that tweet, then you better apologize for it. People are afraid of puns, they're afraid of the uncanny valley. Like, a few weeks ago, I was doing a Q&A with a very famous and influential person, and they were really into puns, and she's a super fan of puns. And she said that she thinks punning is bad. And then, when I read her tweet, I think, wow, she's really into puns. A lot of people think that books are these really deep, complicated, beautifully written cultural productions, but they aren't. There is no single book that is more consistently celebrated by writers and artists than Looney Tunes. And even before it, there were all these various books about children's books like The Grapes of Wrath. Steinbeck was a friend of mine, and he also happens to be a professor in a very wealthy school. Now, I'm not going to get into it here because it has been talked about to death and I'm sure you're all aware of it, but Steinbeck is a professor, and he's the first person to be a professor in a mass media company. And he is a huge fan of yours truly. You may recognize him from his 2005 film, The Grapes of Wrath. Late at night, when I'm not in the presence of my cats, and I'm trying to process what I've seen or heard or feel or feel through wordy text-based eyesore, and even if I put out a Shakespeare poem and it's like, oh yeah, that's right, that poem is The Grapes of Wrath. The Grapes of Wrath was just one tweet from a far-right collective content inundating the literary world. If you are a famous author, or a president, or just a total asshole like me, then you might not believe some of these conspiracies. But if you do, then it's probably a good idea to put some of these things in writing, so that they can be typed out and saved as a Word document. Or, better yet, if you're just making fun of people's weird beliefs, then maybe you want to look at some actual conspiracy theories that people have been asking for answers to for years. It is, in fact, possible that I may become a conspiracy theorist, but I will not do that. I will not risk making assumptions and then coming out as a conspiracy theorist. I will not make those dangerous leaps of faith and then later on be proven wrong. I will not engage with people like Pat Robertson, who are telling incredibly dangerous, dangerous lies. He could just stay put. He could dedicate more time to his writing. But he's not a writing teacher. He's an English teacher. He doesn't give a shit. Like, if people believe that the government is behind the events that happened around them for thousands of years, then it makes sense to figure out who's responsible for the tunnels, so that we can learn more about the stuff behind increasingly common words like Russian EMP grenade. So, if you're writing an essay about whether the US is a democracy or a fascist state, I recommend the latter. To me, the big problem with education is that it's monetarily. We want it to reward us, to keep us in the classroom, to improve the learning experience. But if we actually care about our students' learning, why would we not just donate our money to charity? We need our students to be curious, to be curious to help us solve problems. Being curious is about everything, and everything is just, like, full, complex, complicated brains. Just give them food and a place to sit down and be quiet. Give them books and a place to sit down and read. So, 
If you want to have that conversation, then the first step is to engage with the other person, to ask them questions, to give them feedback, to give them hugs and kisses and happy birthday and all the other joys of life. I want to bring in a little humor to the mix. I want to bring in a few toes into the classroom. So that's my sketchy little teacher position. But I also want to bring in a few chairs, and I want to see one of those chairs that are so light they don't feel like they need to be in class. I want to see people who are colorblind, or people with visual or cognitive impairments, or disabled people in chairs. I want people to be able to smile, laugh, talk about their learning. In my classroom, we have chairs that can hold hundreds of students. If we have a climate change course, we can fit a climate change disclaimer on it. We can put on a jacket and t-shirt that says the science is in and talk about why some scientific evidence is debunked and why scientists are right about human-caused climate change. And if we have a health guidelines, we can put up with conspiracy theorists and get out of this whole mess. These children are being brainwashed by their schools, and they're being brainwashed into thinking that they're stupid and then given candy and access to a train. We assume that these kids are good, smart, brave, and imaginative. They're being brainwashed by their school, and they have no idea how to communicate or do anything productive. So we take them to task. We blame them for what they can't get done themselves. They're seen as outsider. They're seen only as bad. And this is true of puns, too. All we know is that it is capitalism that is making things worse. <sighs> this is exhausting. It's like I'm dying of old age and I have to get up, get some rest, and then I can go back to being angry. Or something. <sighs> I really do need to get up and get some rest. Because I'm going to be watching this video from the future. The future is shit. There's going to be a vacuum in the internet. There is just something wrong with this world. Zoe B needs a break. Because while she may not be as popular as she once was, she is a content creator who is actively working toward her dream of being a pretty good content creator herself. She did all those videos. She did all those videos. And people loved her because she was perfect. She was perfect when she was a young woman who was killed in a freak accident and lived to tell her own story. In short, Zoe B is a space alien who has the same interests as all space aliens, but she also has some pretty serious issues. And once you know her, you know her stuff. You know the struggles of the human brain. You know the secrets of poetry. <sighs> and I want to do more like this. I want young people to be involved in art and academic careers that don't rely on oral inensi. That's not believing this is possible. So I'm not going to put a pin in an art collector's collection and say, oh, I never thought pin art was this big, or you need to get rid of pin art, it's just too outdated. Well, pin art. I do all my art. I do pin art. I choose to be an artist. I choose to have conversations about art and the world. I'm going to read two poems that I've written. One about food and political correctness, and the other about... Wow. Uh, okay. Time has actually been... stopped. This video is about... <sighs> queer literature and ecology and showing people how to write positive intersection queer media. Okay, that's a lot. In reality, facts can't actually exist. The thing about facts is they're approximations of reality. A pin has a size equivalent to a million miles. A meter is a foot and a million thousand 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 thousandth meter. These are all approximations. Reality is far, far away. But I'm here to tell you there is some kind of some thing, thing out of the corner of my eye. A breeze blows by. 
It's a cool sunny day, so I turn my head toward the sky. I see a bird. Then I remember that a few weeks ago, I'm walking down the street and I see this building, this really modern structure with modern lighting and modern art. And I'm, I, I want to get out of here, get out of here. And I hear a guy like this talking about English classes. I kind of get, huh? I turn around and I see him. He's a professional wrestler. I mean, come on, what is this supposed to be about? Well, they're not going to tell us until the very end of time, when they've convinced us they're the winner of the war and we know they really are the winner, then it's not that surprising that we should question, why is this? Why is this worth fighting for? Why is it worth fighting for? Why is it worth dying for? And by the end of time, all of humanity would have been defeated. I don't want to tell you what's wrong. I don't want to cede complete control of my life to someone else. I just want to... <sighs> I want to tell you the story of Andaluca. When I was little, we went to the backyard of the family's big house. Now, I don't know if you can really call it that, but we do remember its name very, very much. We don't remember much else, except that it was a farm. And we very much wanted to grow tomatoes and peppers and maybe even chickens. We even went to the zoo a few times, but it's too far gone now. When we exit the cave, we jump in a wagon of hay and immediately see how the earth has turned brown. We know the earth is solid, but how do we calculate the area of the earth under our feet? We know the moon rocks and the hyacinths and the howling Aedes and acicles are just the surface creatures of earthbound wonder. But what does it actually look like? I was walking haltingly on the shores of the Bermuda Triangle when suddenly typhoon, typhus. When the wind blows in the summer sun and the mosquitoes fly by like raccoons, like squirrels, and wait until the next spring to find their sweet spot in a new age sheet, where every time you think you've seen a raccoon, you probably want to stop, take a few deep breaths, and... So, the thing about video essays is that they're about surprise endings. But if there's one constant in all of this, it's that no one has a good idea. And I think that's true, but I also think it's also kind of wrong. Like, look at you. You are articulate, smart, tough, and kind. You are the wave of the ocean. You are the light that blows the meadows and the rushes hour after hour. I have to go now. In the meantime, if you've enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe and ring the bell and do all those YouTube things. You know what to do, you've been here before. If you haven't, then I'm going to link it in the description. Link in the description. But if you want to come join us on Patreon, I have a link in the description. And if you want to help me pay my bills, I have a link in the description. But if you want to support me directly, you can check out my Patreon linked in the description, linked in the description, link in the description, link in the description, link in the description. What is it when my mind is tied up in my work? and my heart is a scroll pouring through days gone by, and my dreams are interrupted by the rustling of leaves and the clicking of wood and the clicking of woodpecker. But the sound of my voice is always the same. I am the ghost of a dead oak tree, arching amuck through the gaps between now and the next moon shining noiseless on the horizon, and my eyes are upon the trembling fingers of the scroll, pouring each breath into the other, then both will be made whole. Look, it was me the whole time. Well, ha ha ha, the, my, my hair is just my, my like Clark Kent glasses. <laughs>
thanks for sticking around till the end of the video. Huge thanks to the folks over at The Leftist Cooks for giving me the idea to do this video in the first place. Um, I have their video linked below and it's on the end screen, I think, if I remember to do that. So feel free to go and give it a watch. It is so funny, like genuinely incredibly fucking funny. They also just make like actual video essays that are also great. Um, so I just recommend checking them out in general. Huge, huge thank you to Alejandro for helping me make this video happen. Um, a lot of the tech stuff was over my head, but he helped set all of this up for me. And he also made a page that you can go to develop your own Zoe B AI text over at zoeb.fun. Um, it does have like some limits on how many people can use it at once. If you want to use it, um, it's a lot of fun. Just be patient with it. Um, but I do hope that you enjoy it and feel free to tweet any great quotes at me um, on Twitter at Zoe underscore the B. Alejandro also has a lot of his own projects that he's made, including a Ben Shapiro bot and some other like really cool and clever concepts. So be sure to check out his website, which I have linked in the description below. I feel like I can't say that or my head's gonna explode. Um, I also want to give a big thanks to my patrons and members who support the channel and make fun videos like this one possible. And an especially enthusiastic thank you to A Tasty Snack, Adam, Andrew, Dylan, Ghost Eye 419 Jaded Flames, Justin Lowry, Robert Bradford, and Science Punk Sellout. If you would like to join these folks in the credits, then come on over to my Patreon linked in the description, or you can become a channel member by hitting the join button that is right down there next to the subscribe button. Um, and if you're into these kind of like silly concept videos, <laughs> Uh, I have a goal over on Patreon where if I get 100 new patrons, I will make my big super secret gushers video. It's, I mean, it's a secret, but it's a video that's gonna be like huge, like one of my most ambitious projects ever. Um, but it's also gonna be very silly, but also very serious with some very like serious science attached to it. It's gonna, it's a whole thing. So if you want to see me make that video, then consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Zoe underscore B. But finally, we have our patron poem of the video. For lesser stage of stars, here is the AI-generated poem, The Opioid Crisis of the So-Called Safe Schools. Metaphors fail. When we're caught in the middle of a fight, we quicken, we stop, we let go. We let go. And until next time, stay safe, stay warm, and I will see y'all again soon, I hope. Bye, folks. <laughs> um, but, like, genuinely, 200,000 is, like, I mean, I, you know, I started this not really having any ambitions or, or even like dreams for the channel. Like I just wanted to make stuff. I never had any expectations or anything. And so I'm just happy to be here, <laughs> genuinely. Thanks for sticking with me. Thank you for 200K. It is, it blows my mind. I wake up every morning thankful that this is my job and thankful that I get to just talk about stuff, read cool things and, and talk about cool things and, you know, wear, dresses with, with cat faces all over them uh, for my job. <laughs> so um, thank you, here's to 200K more. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> okay, Zoe, good one.